Good morning, and uh, welcome to Keith Wesley Church Online. Great to be able to join with the KWC family, as well as those that are joining us, uh, friends of KWC that are joining us around the world. Uh, great to have you with us this morning. I just want to do, do want to say, before I jump into the Word and tell us about the gift that God has for us today, I, I want you to know that if you're new to King Swanson Church, new to Church Online, uh, we'd love for you to fill out a K KWC Connect card online. You can do that. There's a, a link in the in the uh, comments below if you're on Facebook or in the description below if you're following along on YouTube. Or you can look above if you're following along on the uh, Live Church Online platform. Either way, we'd love to be able to get to know you a little bit better and how we can serve you because we want what's best for you. We, we want you to know we want more for you than from you. And so um, please reach out to us, let us know who you are. And uh, I'd love for everybody, if you would, to just go ahead and, and uh, say who's with us today and maybe give it a like or whatever. You saw the, um, the, the lesson, the sermon helps. Um, and that'd be great. You can help me out as I preach this morning. Uh, that'd be encouraging. And uh, I think it's, it's important as we go through church online uh, just to know that we're not alone, that we're in this together, that there are others that are uh, worshiping the Lord, that are celebrating the Lord, and digging into God's Word this morning, and, and that we're not doing that alone. So feel free to interact with one another, encourage one another in the Lord. Um, but we want to go after this today. God does have a gift for us, and that's what I want to get into today. We started a couple weeks ago on Resurrection Sunday talking about, thank God it's Sunday, T-G-I-S. And I want to continue with that thought. And here's, here's the big idea behind the series. Better Sundays make better weeks because Sunday sets the tone for the week. And last week we talked about focus and how we need to focus on the Lord, on the day of the Lord, and how that will set the, the tone for the rest of the week. Today, as we're going to jump back in and look at Scripture, the same Scripture that we started with last week, I want to start with again this week. It comes from Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. It's the Ten Commandments, where God is giving the Israelites uh, some guidelines on, on what it is to walk in a relationship with Him, what they need to know, what they need to do. And so he says, remember the Sabbath. And Sabbath is a specific time, we talked about last week, that uh, in the Old Testament, the Jews and today, uh, Jews still around the world celebrate the Sabbath as sundown on Friday night to sundown on Saturday night. That is the Sabbath. And so we see here in Exodus 20, verse 8, Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord. We talked about last week, and I won't go into all of the details, but we talked about last week how with the resurrection, Christians started celebrating the Sabbath as the Lord's Day. Uh, started celebrating Sunday as the Sabbath, and a time of worship is a time of rest, but a, particularly a time of worship. But it's important that we not negate this gift that God has given us called the Sabbath. That God has given us a, a pattern for life, a rhythm for how to do life. Six days we work, one day we rest. Six days we work, one day we rest. Six days we work, one day we rest. This rhythm of doing life and how important that is, which takes me to the sermon in a sentence. And I'll just give this to you and then we'll, we'll unpack it. God gave us the rhythm of Sabbath because we need rest to be our best. I'll say it again, you see it on the screen, but God gave us the Sabbath because we need rest to be our best. So let's take a little time to unpack what does that mean, and then I'll give you three steps, three application points uh, for making the Sabbath the best that it can be. Sunday, making it better so we can have a better week. We're going to jump in, Mark chapter 2. We pick it up, and Jesus was with the disciples, and I'm going to go ahead and read this, and then I'll actually give you the, the backdrop to what's going on. Then he, Jesus, said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. Now what's going on is Jesus and his disciples were walking through a grain field on the Sabbath. And as they were walking along, the disciples were a little hungry, so they started picking off the heads of the grain and, and eating it. Just a little uh, grain snack as they were walking on the Sabbath. Well, they... The teachers, the Pharisees of the law, they see this and they come unglued because they're referencing back to Exodus chapter 20 verse 8 and we need to keep the Sabbath day holy and it's a day of rest and 
So they point out the, that commandment, which is an important commandment, because God placed it right between not taking his name in vain and honoring our parents. He placed it before he even talked about murder, that the thou shalt not said thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal. So this was really important to God that we do this. And so the Israelites, particularly the Pharisees, those that were teachers of the law and those that were the, the religious leaders, they decided that they needed to help others understand what that meant. And so they created, most scholars would suggest, about 600 extra rules on top of the law of keeping the Sabbath day holy so that people could know what it means to keep the day holy because they needed help doing so. And so they came up with all kinds of restrictions of, of how much you could lift and how much you couldn't lift. And up to a certain point, you're okay. But if it was beyond that, then it was a sin and just all kinds of rules. And it became a burden. The, the commandment that God met for our good became a burden. And that's what Jesus is pointing to in this passage, as well as a passage in, in Matthew uh, that correlates with this passage. Jesus points out and says, you know what? Basically, he says that the Sabbath was a day for compassion and mercy. It, it's not, it wasn't meant to be a burden. It was meant to lift the burden. He says, man was not made for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made for man. That's that's what Jesus wants us to understand. And, and so the Sabbath is a gift from God. The first thing is we unpack uh, that, that sermon in a sentence that God gave us the Sabbath because we need rest to be our best, is that we need to understand that the Sabbath is a gift from God. Unfortunately, I think a lot of people understand the principle or look at the principle of the Sabbath like they look at the principle of the tithe. And they, they, they think... Why, why should I give God a day? Why should I give God my money? Why should I give God a day? And here's something I want you to know. God doesn't need your day, and God doesn't need your money. He's got an infinite supply of both. He doesn't need your day, and He doesn't need your money. God gave the Sabbath as a gift to us. The Sabbath is a gift from God because God knew that we needed to rest to be our best. And so God established the rhythm of work six days, rest one day, work six days, rest one day, work six days, rest one day, created that rhythm so that we would intentionally set aside time to rest because he knew that physically, emotionally, spiritually, we need rest to be our best. And so I want you to understand that the Sabbath is a gift from God. As we continue on, I want to look at Mark chapter 10, and we'll start to see how the Sabbath can help us to be our best, how rest can help us to be our best. So Mark, we see this, Jesus came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat, she's in a resting position, who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was, what's the word? distracted. Isn't that something that a lot of us uh, wrestle with day in and day out? And probably some of you are even wrestling with that right now. You're distracted. Watching online is, is even more difficult for most of you than watching in person because there are other things that are easy to, uh, to get distracted by. There's kids and there's the animals and there's uh, other windows that we have open, other um, websites that maybe we were follow, looking at or whatever. There's all kinds of distractions that can keep us from focusing, keep us from resting, keep us from being fueled by God. And so she's listening to what he said, but Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. If Martha, if you talk to Martha, Martha just... Life is important. She's busy, busy, busy. And there's things that have to be done. How many of you can relate to Martha and say, yep, there are lots of things that have to be done. I, I, I don't have any time to stop and uh, sit. Which Sabbath, that's what it means. Sabbath means to, to stop, to cease. And Martha said, I don't have any time to stop. I don't have any time to cease. I'm busy. And she wants help. So she came to Jesus and asked, 
Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work? By myself. Tell her. Don't you just love Martha? Tell her. You, Jesus, you tell her. Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, Jesus said. When, when somebody says your middle name, you, you know that you're probably in trouble. You know that you need to pay attention. If my parents ever said, Len Wiley, I really knew that I better pay attention. And I, I better not make them say it again because I didn't want others to, to pick up on my middle name and all of that. But, but if they said, Len, Len, like, wow, I, I better really, really pay attention. Whenever you hear your name twice, it doesn't necessarily mean you're in trouble, but it means that you better pay attention. And Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. I, I want us to see this. Maybe you didn't catch it, but maybe you did. When Martha was talking, and we see that Martha was distracted by, by many things, there are all kinds of things that that she thought she needed to do. She has to do these things. And what does Jesus say? You're, you're worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed, only one. If we want to have a better life, if we want to have a better Sunday, to have better weeks, then we need to understand the principle of the Sabbath. And we need to understand that restlessness, distractions, and the do, 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 work, 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 and never pausing, never stopping, never ceasing to rest is the enemy of better days. That restlessness is the enemy of better days. And that's what Jesus goes on to basically say. He says, Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. It won't be taken away from her because it's it's better. She has chosen to lean into my rhythm, the rhythm that I created of work six days, rest one day, work six days, rest one day. She She's understood the gift that is hers when she'll simply stop to listen, cease, and be still. And so let's continue and we'll see how the Sabbath helps us. The Sabbath helps give us a rhythm of resting from. Martha needed to rest from her work. Busy, 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 do, do, do. And you know what happens when, when we just work, 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 when we do, do, do? It, it's something that in the business world, they, they call it the law of diminishing returns. That we get to a certain point that the more we do, the less we get done. The more we do, the less we get done. And in reality, what happens is the more we do, if we don't stop, if we don't cease, the more we do, the more we become undone. The more that we become wrecked. I, I heard it uh, said before uh, that, that those that uh, work at warp speed will warp their soul. When, when we're going at warp speed, will warp our soul. They'll become undone. And so God gave us this wonderful gift of Sabbath as a way to, to give us a rhythm of resting from, to just stop and to cease. Because we need it physically, emotionally, spiritually to be our best. God knew that we needed rest to be our best. And so he's given us the Sabbath. But there are, there are two things, uh, especially in our time, that, that wrestle against that, that make it harder for us to rest. Let me give you those two just quickly. The, the first one was the invention of electricity. And both of these things are great things. Both of these things uh, I have been thankful for. But if you think about it, when, when God created the Sabbath, God also created, even before that, He created night and day. He created sunshine for us to be awake and for us to enjoy what His creation. He created nighttime because that was a time for us to be able to rest, be able to kind of shut down, be replenished, be refueled for the next day. But with the electricity and everything else that we have going on, it's much harder 
for people to stop, to cease, and to rest. To stop from all the things, all the craziness of life. The other thing that uh, man has invented, man has uh, developed is technology. And, and I love technology. I, I love uh, you know, smartphones and, and uh, other, other kinds of technology. But one thing that I've learned is that tech can wreck. If I'm not careful, tech can wreck me. And I, I'm not just talking about pornography and uh, just in getting into all the different uh, back and forth that people have on social media or, or the um, other things that can, can really be a, a drain to one's soul and, and to one's mind. I, I'm just talking about the, the sheer waste of time that can be there if I'm not careful because tech can wreck me. And so intentionally setting aside time, stopping and unplugging is so critical to, to enjoying rest, to actually having rest. It's, it's crazy how attached people have become to their phones. You know, before we didn't have cell phones and uh, you could go somewhere and not worry about it. You could go to the bathroom and not have to be on the internet or be on social media, um, be talking or texting to somebody. You, you could go to bed and the phone was on the other end of the house. You wake up and you didn't have to check your messages and everything. You're like, I'll check that later on. If somebody really needs me, they'll, they'll get a hold of me when they need to get a hold of me. But now we're, it's like we're glued to this and it becomes our life. And if we're not careful, tech will wreck. God gave us a Sabbath because he knows that we need rest to be our best. Let's take a look at uh, Exodus chapter 16, just before God gave the Israelites the, the Ten Commandments. We see this. They were in the wilderness, and they were complaining, they were hungry. And so we see this. Six days, God is speaking here. He says, six days you are to gather it, it being the manna, bread from heaven, that God is going to supply. But on the seventh day, the Sabbath, there will not be any, because he's going to give extra on the, the day before so that they'll have enough for that day and then enough for the Sabbath. But you know the Israelites, they're a little thick-headed. They, they don't learn very quickly. They go out, some of them, go out on the Sabbath to, to, to gather the manna and there's nothing there. And we see what God responds to Moses. Moses is the leader. It's not really that Moses is uh, in trouble, but he's because he's in charge, he's got a message to pass on. And here's what the Lord says. How long will you refuse to keep my commandments and my instructions? Bear in mind that the Lord has given you, see, the Sabbath is a gift from God. The Lord has given you the Sabbath. That is why on the sixth day he gives you bread for two. Because God wanted the Israelites to rest from, to cease, and to stop. But he also, if you see it here, he wanted them to rest in which is the next thing that we see when we're understanding that God gave us the Sabbath because he knows that we need rest to be our best. The Sabbath gives us a rhythm of resting in. Not just rest, resting from the day-to-day -day and the, the hustle and bustle, but resting in who he is and resting in his provision, resting in what he had done. And so for the Israelites, they were reminded very uh, visually, as they gathered on the day before the Sabbath, that God was providing for them on the Sabbath. That God was there for them. That God was taking care of them. They were reminded that they could rest in who God is. That they could rest in God's provision. They could rest from, but they could also rest in. Jesus picks up on this and we see really how the Old Testament and the Old Covenant and the New Covenant, how we see how God worked with the Israelites, was a foreshadowing of what we would see take place in the New Testament, the New Covenant, and how God, through Christ and Christ's death on the cross and his resurrection, how God was actually pointing to himself as the Sabbath, as our place to find rest. Here's what Jesus said in uh, Matthew chapter 11. He says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. 
Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, in Jesus we have this invitation, a Sabbath invitation to rest. And so Sabbath, the Lord's Day, becomes this reminder of the rhythm that God set in place. Six days we work, one day we rest. Six days we work, one day we rest. Six days we work, one day we rest. This rhythm of there's work, but there's also a need for rest. And God gave us this gift of Sabbath because we need rest to be our best. We need to rest from, but also we need to rest in. We don't just rest from work, we rest in God's work. We rest in what God has done. We rest in what Christ accomplished on the cross. That it's not about working, working, working to earn our salvation. It's about resting in the salvation that God has provided in Christ Jesus. And so this great, wonderful invitation from Jesus to rest in Him, to yoke with Him, and find great rest. So let me give you three things as we close here. Three things to how we can apply today's message. The first one is joyfully celebrate the gift of Sabbath. Joyfully celebrate the gift of Sabbath. Every Sunday we should find our souls just saying, Thank God it's Sunday. Thank you, Lord, for this gift of Sabbath. I need this day of rest. I need this day to really just rest in you, to, to celebrate who you are and what you've done. Thank you, God, for Sunday. Thank God it's Sunday. So joyfully celebrate in the Sabbath. The second thing that I would say is intentionally eliminate busyness. If we're going to be our best, we have to find rest. And if we're going to find rest, I think we have to intentionally eliminate busyness. I think one of the things, one of the positive things that can come from this season that we're in right now is that we can start to maybe better recognize what actually needs to be done, what we need to do, and what we don't need to do. There are a lot of things that pre-coronavirus we thought we needed in our life. I think there were a lot of things that we thought we needed to do but I think one of the things that we can learn from this season is that there are a lot of things that we don't need to do. There are a lot of things that are just, just a bunch of busyness. And like Martha, we can become distracted in the hustle and bustle, the go, 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 that we fail to, to work the six and rest the one. We fail to just rest from and as we fail to rest from, we also fail to rest in. And so we need to intentionally eliminate busyness. Let, let me give you two uh, particular ways to help with that. Number one, learn to say no. Learn to say no and give, you, give yourself permission to say no. I, I'm just going to help you out. Everybody say no. Yeah, you can, you can do it. Some of you are saying no inside. You're like, no, I don't want to do that. Everybody say no. You can do this. Everybody say no. All right, it, it's really not that hard, right? We say no. There are times when, when people come to us and they have their ideas and they have their things that they want us to do. It might be our children. It, it might be the pastor. It, it might be somebody else. There are things that, that and that, they can be good things. But when good things keep us from the better, we need to intentionally eliminate those things. We need to intentionally say no to those things. So the first thing, as we intentionally eliminate busyness, make sure you learn to say no. Give, your permit, give yourself permission to say no. The second thing is to power down so you can power up. If you're going to eliminate uh, busyness, if we're going to intentionally eliminate busyness, we need to understand that there are times that we need to power down. And power down, uh, <laughs> unplugging, literally can mean unplugging. That we actually turn off the TV, maybe even unplug the TV. That we turn off the phone or we set the phone aside. That we unplug from tech so that we can focus so we can be refueled by spending time with the Lord 
that we can just soak in His presence. Which takes me to the third thing. Confidently saturate, saturate yourself in God's grace. Confidently saturate yourself in God's grace. It's so important that we not just see Sabbath as a day of, of kind of like a, a, a day of vacation, a day to, to not work, but that we rest in God's work, that we confidently saturate ourselves in His grace, that we're reflecting on what He's done, that we're resting in what Christ accomplished on the cross, that we're resting in God's provision. So confidently saturate, saturate yourself in God's grace. I, I love what the Lord said to the Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians. He says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power, God's power, is made perfect in weakness. Listen to Paul's response to that. He says, Therefore, I will boast all the more in my weakness. Uh, I'll be gladly, I'll boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That as we rest in the Lord, His power rests on us. That we are refueled for the day. We're refueled for the week ahead. You see, God gave us the Sabbath because we need rest to be our best. And so these three things I highly encourage you to do. I want to pray over you and read a part of a psalm over you. But before I do that, it's possible that there are some that have joined today. I have no doubt in my mind that there are those that have joined today that today is a day that you need to for the first time, find rest in Jesus Christ. For the first time, you need to receive Him as your Savior so that you can truly find rest in Him. You've been trying and trying and trying and trying to do life on your own. You've been trying and trying and trying, some of you, to earn favor with God, to, to get your way to heaven, and you can't work your way to heaven. I'm sorry to tell you, but you're just not that good, and you're not that smart. None of us are. It's by God's grace that we're saved, not by works, so that no one can boast. And so today would be the day that I would encourage you to, to yoke with Jesus, to take Him as your Savior, and find rest in Him. And so if that would be your desire today, you recognize that you're a sinner in need of a Savior, that you would pray something along these lines. It doesn't have to be these exact words, but if this would be uh, what, what your heart says and, and uh, how, how it would resonate within you, then you'd say something like this, Lord Jesus, I recognize that I can't do this on my own. I need your grace. I need your mercy. I need your strength. Lord Jesus, I recognize that I'm a sinner, that I have gone outside of your will for my life. I confess my sins before you and ask, Lord, that you would forgive me, that you would bring uh, your forgiveness into my life, that you would cleanse me and make me new. Lord Jesus, you died for me. Now help me to live for you. I pray in your name. Amen. And so as I read this psalm, I'd love for each of you to just close your eyes. Just take in a, a deep breath and then let it out. Take in another deep breath and then let it out. And just rest from and rest in the Lord as I read part of Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear Though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. When life is topsy-turvy, when life is just helter-skelter, that, that's especially when we need to rest in Him. 
Sabbath is a gift from God because God knows we need rest to be our best. So let me encourage you to rest today in Jesus Christ. Rest in His power. Though the waters, though its waters roar, the psalmist says, and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. We're going to rest because we, we know who God is. We know what He's done and we know what He's capable. We know that we can trust Him. And so we're, we're going to just stop. We're going to cease. We're going to rest. It's interesting that right after this third verse that I just read, there's, there's a word that's uh, in a variety of the Psalms. It's the word Selah. Uh, many of you know it's what we named our daughter, Selah, which means pause, stop, think about it. And, and too often, we, we would just want to zip right on through and God says, wait, wait, stop and think about it. Rest. Find, find shelter in me. Look at me as your refuge and your strength. Take a deep breath. And exhale. Take a deep breath. And exhale. Rest in Him. And the psalmist concludes with these words from the Lord. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. And so we rest in the Lord. So glad to have you join us today. So thankful for our time together. And if you prayed to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you just chose today to take His yoke upon you, I would love for you to let us know. You can do so in the comments below. You can send a private message or you can fill out the Connect card online. Uh, however it works for you, we just would love to be able to celebrate with you and we'd love to be able to come alongside and encourage you in your walk with the Lord. We're going to receive our morning's uh, tithes and offerings. Uh, three different ways to give. You can give by sending a check in and you can see uh, the address there on the screen where you can send that to. You can do so. On, you can give online uh, through PayPal or Tithely, and there's links um, the website to go to for that. And then you can also text to give, and you should see also the uh, the number if you'd like to text to give. Again, just want to say how uh, proud I am of of our church family. How you have been so faithful to give. God has continued to provide through this season, even though we're not able to gather in person. Uh, we're not able to pass the offering plates. It's in your heart so much that you don't have to have an offering plate put in front of you to, to give unto the Lord. You, you just have it in your heart to walk in obedience, to walk in trust, and that you, you uh, believe in the mission and the vision of the, the church and what God wants to do in and through Kingston Wesleyan Church, that you have just continued to give. And so I just want to again say thank you to each of you and uh, just Again, give praise to God. And I want to close out um, with a song, and then I'll come back and pray. A song that talks about the, the name of Jesus. And so let's just let's lift up that name. And uh, you've been maybe sitting for a little while. I don't know what you're doing when I'm preaching. Um, but maybe maybe you just go ahead and stand and just worship the Lord as we, we um, glory His name. Let's do that.